Hey, Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Good afternoon to all of you. I do have a big update on this next storm that's about to hit the Ohio Valley. Then what's going to happen in the south. I am showing heavy rainfall amounts and I am showing strong thunderstorms. Now remember, I do have all the links in the description so it saves you time. Please use them as you need them. And if you've never been here before, hello. <laughs> My name is Mark. I do upload every single day. Just not Friday from sundown to Saturday at sundown. That's when I take my Sabbath. But I want to make sure you all have every information that you all need so you be prepared for this. Because this looks like it is going to build up to be a strong two days for the Ohio Valley and for the South. Now before we get to the storms that's coming soon, let's talk about what's happening tonight. Because starting this afternoon around 2, 3 o'clock, there will be some storms that will pass through the Northeast. Through New York, through Pennsylvania. Uh, as it grows through the afternoon, it will affect also northern Delaware, uh, eastern Pennsylvania as it goes through New York for the whole night. It could get some snowfall a little bit as the temperatures get a little bit colder when you get around the early morning hours. And there is some possible snowfall that can happen around 3 o'clock in the morning, especially for Binghamton and Altoona. There's a little bit of snow that could come down in this midnight hours before tomorrow morning pops up again. This is how it's going to play out for these storms for this afternoon. You can see the time on the top left. Uh, it's moving pretty slow, so you can see within the, the half hour, the hour. But you can see this goes all the way towards Syracuse, all the way till 10 o'clock at night. Then you get a good band of storms. And I will put some heavy rainfall down, and I am showing that the precipitation will be a good amount. I'll show you that. Link is in the description for the precipitations if you want to go straight to that. Uh, here's a snowfall that will happen in the morning for the little isolated areas, of course. So overnight hours, Montana, you're going to be getting some sto storms as it goes towards the Dakotas. But then some snowfall could come in around 11 o'clock in the morning for tomorrow for northeast Montana, northwest North Dakota, with some storms as well that will stretch all the way down to South Dakota. And then by the time you go into the early afternoon, then it's going to stretch all the way across Minnesota, Iowa, even southern Wisconsin time, you get to about 4 p.m. for tomorrow. Then as it goes through tomorrow evening, the storms can go through the Ohio Valley. Then as you go to 4 o'clock in the morning for Sunday, you still, now you're getting snow in north South Dakota as well as southeast North Dakota. You can still get storms in Iowa as it rolls through the morning of Sunday and it goes to the Ohio Valley. So as we take a look, this is tomorrow afternoon, 7 p.m., 8 p.m. at night. You can see that the storm starts really getting strong for the Ohio Valley. And then once you get around midnight tomorrow night, then it's going to strengthen real good, go across the whole upper Ohio Valley. You're going to have storms in the north, winds in the south. I'll show you that as well. Then once you get into Sunday morning about 8 o'clock, then it's going to really get in for good for Michigan as it moves towards the northeast. And it's going to hit southern Michigan for a long time. Then once you get into the afternoon for Sunday, about 3, 4 o'clock, it's still hitting Michigan, but now it's starting to move towards the northeast. And by 7 p.m., you get a good blow up right around Syracuse, western New York. By Sunday night, 11 o'clock, it starts moving through the last part of the northeast through Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, as it leaves. And the south and the southeast will see storms as well. Once you get to about 5 o'clock in the afternoon for Sunday, storms are going to brew up in northern Louisiana. Then as you go through the evening, it's going to stretch across Mississippi. And it will be a lot of heavy rainfall. I will show you your amounts. And as you go all the way until midnight, you, now you got this big storm from Mississippi to Alabama. And it's going to go overnight hours all across. It will stretch over to Georgia by 7 o'clock on Monday morning. Now it's hitting southern Alabama as it goes towards southern Georgia, and it will be leaving by Monday by noontime. Now it's storming up one last time before it stops. Now what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to show you storm relative helicity. Now this is us about 1130, 12 o'clock for noontime for tomorrow. And you can see that when I go, you can see all afternoon long, this storm is building up strength. This has a lot of cyclonic updraft rotation in it. it don't, it's not going to weaken by any means. By the time you get to tomorrow evening for the overnight storms, now it stretches all the way down. It creates a big system of cyclonic updraft rotation, a lot of energy. Look at that. You even get some very strong values in there. Right around 4 o'clock in the morning for a Sunday, northern Illinois, you get over 1,200. So that, that is some very high, high values. Some very serious storms are going to be brewing 
It is going to be an overnight into the early morning issue. It will carry over till 7 o'clock in the morning for northern Indiana. You get high values as well as it moves towards the northeast. Now, once you get about Sunday afternoon for noontime, now it's going to affect Pennsylvania on the western side. The energy will shift to the eastern side by 5 p.m. for Sunday. Then as you go to Sunday evening for Sunday night, the strongest is definitely over uh, eastern Eastern Pennsylvania, southeastern New York. Now, once you get to about 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon for Sunday, it really strengthens up some high values. Not only what you've seen for Illinois and Indiana, but now it's going to move to the northeast as well. And they get really strong for eastern Pennsylvania, especially around 4, 5 o'clock for Sunday afternoon. You're going to have some very strong thunderstorms as well as northern New Jersey as well. And as this system leaves out the northeast, it's going to be some strong storms for southeast New York. Also for Rhode Island, around 3 o'clock in the morning for Monday. As it leaves through Maine, the energy is gone, the storm's weakened, and it moves off. And you can see the high values as it strengthens away. And these are actually strong values that you had right here going across the valley. Now as we go through this wind gust, we can see exactly what kind of damaging winds we are going to be looking at with this. Because the storms, the worst of the storms, will be north and east of this surface low pressure the the worst of the winds will be south and east of this storm so right now this is right around 6 p.m for tomorrow afternoon and you can see that the orange is 40s the, the dark orange with the shady started getting higher up into the 40s but you can see your ledger up here you will get all the way up to your 40s for the orange and then once you get into orange then it starts going into the high 40s to the 50s then the 60s will be pink there is no pink, <laughs> but as you go through tomorrow afternoon, it'll start building up on its wind gusts. It will start strengthening, especially for uh, northern uh, Texas, Oklahoma, and for Kansas. And right by 10 o'clock tomorrow night, now you're going to be seeing 50 and upper 50 miles per hour wind gusts that will be passing through all night long while you have these storms. By midnight, the worst part is this red right here. This is definitely into the 50s. And while you go by 5 o'clock Sunday morning, now you're getting the storms going across the Ohio Valley. Underneath it is some bad winds. And you see right there, just for Kentucky, southern Indiana, northern Tennessee, there is some bad wind gusts that will be going around 10 o'clock in the morning for Sunday as these storms pass by. When you look at the wind gusts, you can see that it's almost in 50 with this red. It's on the edge. All this orange is 40s, just so you know. And you can see just for Kentucky, this is 40s now, some spots of 50s, but 40s all in the orange as this passes through. By 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, underneath this storm, the storm's going to be in the upper Ohio Valley. The wind's going to be in the lower. You can see the 50 miles per hour has passed through. Sunday afternoon, by 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon, you're still getting southern Ohio as it moves towards Pennsylvania. 9 o'clock Sunday night, now you're getting strong 40 miles per hour winds on the whole mid-Atlantic and northeast, and it will go overnight to the early morning hours. I did see some for southern Delaware. It might spark up to 50. You do have a chance for that. As you go into Monday morning, about 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, now the northeast, New England states are getting the last of the wind as it moves off. Worst of the wind gusts for Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas by 8 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. It will be passing through your counties. It will be strengthening up to 50 as it gets to 10, 11 o'clock at night. Overnight hours is going to swing about 2 o'clock in the morning over Missouri. It will have some 50 miles per hour wind gusts hit and miss across the whole area as it goes to about 7 o'clock for Sunday morning and goes towards the Ohio Valley. So here it is, 3 o'clock in the morning. The worst of the winds coming across southern Missouri. Remember, all this orange is 40s, which is bad enough, but this is the 50s right here. Kentucky, by 9 o'clock in the morning for Sunday, you're going to be covered in 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Southern Indiana also, by 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon, it's going to hit Indi uh, southern Indiana and southern Ohio as it moves over to the northeast. By 8 o'clock tomorrow night, now it's going to start hitting uh, Pittsburgh, West Pennsylvania, as it moves to the northeast. Delaware, southern Delaware, you do get in a little bit by Monday morning, 2 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning of these winds. But the rest of it is 40s as it moves through for the rest of the period as it goes across the New England and leaves. 
Now, as we look at the total precipitation that we could get out of this, uh, we do get a lot of precipitation and heavy rainfall for tonight for the Northeast that we will be getting, as well as when this storm comes down from Montana and it starts coming towards the, the Ohio Valley, it gets really heavy for Ohio Valley. Then the storm that happens in the south, it gets really heavy for the south as well. So what I'm going to do is go through your amounts, let you see exactly what you could be getting. So I'm going to show you the heaviest rainfall that I am picking up. So far it shows from Des Moines, Iowa. You get it two inches. See the rapids, two inches. And it goes along this whole white area. This pink area is still over an inch. It's still heavy. It's just the heaviest is where I'm showing it. Peoria, Chicago, a couple of inches. Uh, as you go through the Ohio Valley and see for southern Michigan as well, you can see Fort Wayne will get a couple of inches. Uh, north of Mansfield, Cleveland. Even south of Detroit, it'd be around the edge of one to two inches for Detroit. But southern Michigan, you get over two inches, and it is heavy all across northern Pennsylvania as well. And in between the boys and Altoona, you'll get a couple inches, southern Meadville. But it is showing that Binghamton from tonight and tomorrow and northern uh, Syracuse will get a couple inches as well between tonight and the rest of this system. As well as the rest of the south, because within the next... Within the next four days, there's going to be some very heavy rainfall, especially for southern Texas. I'm showing over nine inches of rainfall uh, right north of Uvalde, south of Campwood. A big hot spot of heavy rainfall. Watch out for flooding. But you can see where the one inch, the pink, is one to two inches. And then where the white is, and you can see in San Antonio also, you'll be getting over two inches of rainfall, almost three, as it goes through San Marcos, Gonzales. Then as we move towards the eastern Texas, now you got southern Brenham. All this white is two plus inches of rainfall. This is going to be a lot of heavy flooding we need to worry about. And it will carry to the southeast as well. You got southern Arkansas right below Pine Bluff, a couple of inches. Monroe, you can see two to three inches, Louisiana. Mississippi, you got a big hot spot for three to four inches. It looks like it's right above Jackson, in between Jackson and Clarksdale especially by Greenwood, over three inches. That's a bad hot spot, and it will carry from northern northeast Louisiana into this area. So this is a real bad hot spot for some heavy flooding. Then you got southern Mississippi as well. You got Bogalusa, Louisiana, right by Jackson, uh, right, right below Wiggins and Biloxi, also two to three inches. You got to watch out for that. Alabama, you also got by Andalusia. You got over two inches, big hot spot. Montgomery, over two inches. That's really bad for Mississippi right there. I can't stop, can't stop looking at that big hot spot for Monroe, Louisiana to Louisville, Mississippi. You also got Bingham, Bingham, almost two inches left of Winfield, Alabama, two inches, and that's about where the heaviest is going to be. You do have one spot in northern Florida, right above, right above Palm Coast. That could see a couple inches of rainfall. So that is a lot of things you got to worry about. Not only the winds. The thunderstorms, the craziness, but now you got the heavy rainfall, and you can see how bad it's just going to be on the whole country. All right, so I'm going to play this in motion so you can see the total precipitation that you're going to be getting starting tonight. This is right around noontime today. You see the time and date on the top left of this rainfall. God bless all of you. As y'all know, I'll be going into my Sabbath this, Sabbath this afternoon, and I want to make sure y'all are prepared for this i want to make sure y'all have every piece of information that y'all could have as far as what could happen so if you did like the video do me a favor hit like on the video if you have others that's in the path of this share this information on social media help get the word out to these impacts i also want to read to you today first uh, timothy chapter two i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all 
to be testified in due time, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle. I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Not, notwithstanding she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. God bless you all. I hope you have a very blessed day, a very safe night. It is Friday. <laughs> I appreciate you for visiting my channel today. All glory does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs> have a blessed weekend, fellas.